I just listened to a very disturbing video um, which was uh, going round and round on uh, TikTok and uh, YouTube of this uh, great pastor, or I call him Bishop uh, Masinde of uh, Umoja Deliverance Church and he was saying that um, Jesus became poor so that we would be rich and he was comparing the life of uh, Alan Kuna who passed on just uh, not long ago and uh, during his funeral service he was speaking and saying that this man really lived a good life because Jesus died or Jesus became poor so that he would be rich and uh, this one absolutely coming from a mouth of a bishop doesn't really make sense and I wonder if the church is basically being run by people who do not even understand what salvation is all about because if you say Jesus became poor so that we would be rich in natural material wealth then you do not understand salvation Jesus himself being God coming from heaven to come and live here on earth so that he can save mankind that is poverty by itself and him he wanted to save us so that we would be rich in spiritual things but now when you convert it and you make it uh, because someone drives a Lexus, drives a good car, now that is the richness that this man had. Then when he gets to heaven or gets to wherever he, he goes, at the end of the day, then there is no need of spiritual things. Because uh, I understand uh, the way the Bible says that all that we are chasing after is spiritual, to be right with God to be in a relationship with God. And it's not about material things, because if it's about material things, then um, I would say the 12 disciples really wronged God in one way or another, because uh, why were they poor? They were just normal fishermen who had nothing. And they were walking with Jesus 24 hours, all through, sleeping in the same place, maybe walking day, every And they were never rich. So you will wake up maybe you'll hear somebody say oh it is because that time there were no riches my friend people were rich in those days why were the disciples poor why was jesus himself even never had anything in this world are you saying he became poor so that you would be rich in these material things of this world so guys when you listen to these prosperity preachers you have to be very keen on what you're listening because many of them are sending you to hell into a ditch they themselves they do not understand because their god is their belly and i will tell you this with all due respect my friend um bishop masinde whatever you have put in it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense and you need salvation if that is the salvation that you think you have then you you're trading in a very uh, a bad space you need to be saved and you need to understand what salvation is all about. And you are misquoting all through talking about grace, saying that grace is getting things. Remember, the one that you're talking about, uh, Alan Kuna, he was rich and driving all those cars and living in good houses because of tithe, tithe and offerings which are given by people. And remember, you pastors, sometimes you have a problem because you will argue and say, oh, this guy had the finer things in life. Well, the poor congregants, people who come to walking to church, they are, they are shouting because of brainwash. You've been brainwashed to keep on calling your mom and dad. But did you see what Kathy Kuna said? That going to her place, you need an appointment. My friend, that is not your father. That's not your mother. Those are just people that are preaching the gospel like any other person out there. And uh, if you want to know if they are your mother or your father, go and try and go to their house today. Trust you me, you will not even pass the gate. You need an appointment. So they are not your parents. Don't be lied by anyone. And uh, people have been brainwashed by these religious bandits, prosperity gospel preachers, who all thing that they want is to milk you dry, to get as much money as they can from you because of your ignorance. The Bible says, whosoever puts his trust in man is cursed. Most of the people today, they have put their trust in this pastor A, pastor B, bishop A, bishop B. And any pastor or bishop who does not lead you to God, but leads you to himself, is a bandit, is a thief, is a thug. And most of these people we have today, 
they are basically bandits because they they don't teach people about god they teach people about going to themselves do, do you have some flu run to the pastor do you need this go to the pastor do you need oh pastor oh pastor I'm... when do they ever teach people to go and uh, to god you see in the early church something i need you to understand because they will quote this in the book of Acts and say, people in the early church, they used to go and sell everything that they had and they brought it to the apostles' feet. Well, they brought it to the apostles' feet, but they don't read the next verse. It says, and the apostles distributed all that what they got amongst every other person. And there, is, there was nothing in the early church, nobody in the early church who lacked anything. Look at the church, like the one we are talking about, the Cuna church. And I'm not against it. It just pains me to see all this hypocrisy. Look at that church. The owner of the church is a billionaire. I hear even as a private jet. I don't know if it's true or not. Rumors are everywhere. He is a billionaire. And the members are filthy poor. Do you know what's filthy poor? <laughs> members are really down. Others, they come walking. Yes, of course, we'll say 10% of them, they'll drive cars. But there are so many of them in all the church branches who are really poor. If you really loved them, why can't you open up ways that even themselves, they can have what you have? Or why can't you help those who are in need? I've seen so many people saying such kind of churches, when you try to go and tell them, hey, pastor, or this and that, I'm, I have this and this problem, they won't really help you. They'll lay hands on you. And tell you, okay, God will solve it out. But them, when they need this and that, they will need money, tangible money. Did you hear him when he was uh, he went to America to for treatment? He said, in out of the half a billion Kenya shillings that he spent in hospital, he never spent anything from his pocket. Do you think the money fell from heaven? No, it is the congregants who contributed that money. But when the congregants want money, then they'll have. To receive prayers you see if he really loved the people he could just have established a cancer center here in the country with that half a billion that he spent to go and treat himself alone in the hospital and then the after he's been healed from the cancer center the same center will be uh, treating other people you see that's common sense even someone who is not a believer will think that way but you see because you have been blinded by religion we keep on thinking that, oh, my papa, oh, my papa. Keep on calling them papas. But let me tell you, the church age is fading out. And we are getting into a tribulation moment. And that moment, it will be only if you understand God and you have kept his word in your heart, are you going to survive. My friend, if you still think that you are living in the times that were before, look at the world today. The church age is going out, is fading out. Now another era is coming. An era which did not recognize anything of God. And if you have not put God in your heart, my friend, if you're still following prosperity preachers, if you're still following false churches, and you have not put God's word in your heart, I don't know how you're going to survive. Because even those Bibles, you will not be able to see them. The apps, you'll not be able to see them. They'll all be deleted from your phones. Look at how they have uh, disorganized uh, the Bibles. Today, NIV and all these other Bibles, apart from King James Bible, all of them, they have been edited. So many things, you cannot even understand what, what is truth anymore. My friend, get yourself a real tangible Bible. Start praying and seeking God while he may be found. But if you keep on following these prosperity bandits, you'll, you'll be left worried and you'll be left wondering, where is God? I'm saying this with love and maybe just if this pastor, this bishop changes his mind, Bishop Masinde, Masinde something, please change your mind and seek God while he may be found.